Joining us now, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, to preview just what we think is going to be an electric game, electric atmosphere at mm -hmm. Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Uh, Greg, obviously not all games are created equally. Uh, fair to say that this one just feels a little bit different uh, compared to even last week for BYU? Uh, yes, and uh, I know there's been some reference to last year, the Utah weekend, uh, the vibe and the energy. I don't know if anything ever comes close. That was the week in which BYU got accepted into the Big 12. Why don't then, we do that today again? And then broke a string of, of nine straight losses uh, to their in-state rivals. So that was kind of a, kind of a standalone. But, uh, yeah, a late Saturday night against a future conference rival. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't wait. I think we've established that we're okay with these late kicks now, right? It took like 12 years. That's who we are? I think it's our thing, and I think we felt validated when the the conference realignment happened, where it's like, oh, we want that late time zone with Western teams. We go, oh, we do that. <laughs> it feels like we felt Big validated. Big 12 after dark way. is a thing. We yeah. want that. Okay, so let's talk about this matchup because obviously. Uh, it's it's similar teams to last year, but it's not the same. The primary running backs for both teams are, are gone. What differences are you seeing that make you think BYU's got a, a chance at competing or even winning, unlike last year? Uh, the odds makers feel differently, I think, about the game. Yeah. Uh, Baylor was a team that uh, handled BYU pretty well last year, and they're the underdogs coming into this one here tomorrow night. Uh, the fact that BYU returns Jaron Hall, I think, I think matters a lot. Uh, Blake Shapin has his first true away start yes. tomorrow night. Okay, he came off the bench at Kansas State, home to Texas Tech, a neutral Big 12 title game, and then home to Albany. This is his first true away experience. And to have it be on a Saturday night, 9.20 p.m. kick body clock, 65,000 fans in the stands, uh, an environment that has a reputation of, of frazzling opposing teams and quarterbacks, uh, Blake Shapin is, is uh, stepping into the fire tomorrow night, and I'm excited to see how he performs in that environment. So uh, that, that'll be new for Baylor. And, and, and two, they're, they're still introducing playmakers. Uh, they, they lost practically every primary pass catcher and ball carrier from last year, and they're starting someone that, different, that didn't start against BYU last year. That's a lot of novelty, and again, and again an unfamiliar environment. BYU has um, more, let's say, more proven playmakers at this point. Now, the, the, the Romney-Nakua thing is a major asterisk. Those are playmakers whose availability is in, in question for tomorrow night. But BYU brings back a lot of playmakers. Uh, Lupini Katoa and Chris Brooks have been in the end zone around 50 times in their college careers. That's wild. That's a lot of scores. <laughs> they, they, that, that's a lot to lean on. And Baylor's running backs, uh, they're, 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 they're new to that respect. They, they're, they're, you know, they're two and three and four touchdowns for their career. And so BYU brings back a lot of experience at really important spots. I like the way the O-line shape up, both teams. I mean, yes, mm -hmm. Baylor brings back four returning starters from an O-line that graded BYU last year, just graded the Cougars. Uh, yet BYU's O-line is right there, returning a ton of starting reps and look real good against South Florida in week one. I love the matchup. It's fascinating. All right, we'll start with this question in terms of Baylor's ability to road grade against BYU. 303 rushing yards mm -hmm. last year. I mean, just, yeah, a, a tough game for BYU to say the least. How much of a difference will a healthy Keenan Peely and a healthy core of linebackers, for that matter, uh, help assist the defensive front and prevent something like uh, like that from happening? Again? Yeah, I hope it makes a big difference. And I do think that, that BYU's D-line rotation – uh, you know, again, ideally pays off on a night like tomorrow night when you can stay fresh with a lot of, you know, I, my, my, my defensive line board right now, you know, features 12 guys. I've got 12, 12, guys. I've got 12 guys on the Greg's board. Greg's got his play-by-play -play boards and, here. And, and, and I, would, I, I won't be surprised if all 12 see snaps uh, on the D-line tomorrow night. I, I do like that aspect about Elisa Tuiaki's defense. Is he, he believes he can go, you know, really that deep, double-digit deep on the D-line with a healthy rotation. I really thought it was fascinating, too, how he used Tyler Batty last week uh, at South Florida. He wasn't a straight down lineman all night by any stretch. He, was, he looked like a linebacker on some snaps. He was really moved around a little bit. And I'll be curious to see, you know, what they do with Tyler in that respect week to week and kind of implement him as kind of that, uh, that, that versatile piece on the defense. You mentioned uh, Puka Naku and Gunnar Romney. Do you expect to see them tomorrow? What's your situation? No, I, 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 you know, I, I think it's better to be surprised than disappointed. So I, I'll go in saying I, I, I'd be surprised if both played, let's put it that way. Um, there's no doubt, you know, losing Gunnar Romney early in camp and losing Puka Nakua seven minutes into the season, those are suboptimal outcomes. BYU is better with those two guys on the field. And, and BYU needs more games with those guys healthy together. I don't think we've seen enough of those guys together healthy. They accounted for 250 receiving yards in Waco last year. Like, they were the pass game last year with Jaron Hall. And, and they may or may not be available tomorrow. But I believe in Keanu Hill. 
I believe in Chase Roberts. I believe in Braden Cosper. I believe in Cody Epps. I believe in Terrence Fall. I believe in three good tight ends. I believe in pass catchers out of the backfield. I believe that 10 pass catchers last week was not an illusion. Ooh. I believe BYU can succeed with or without Gunnar Romney and Puka Nakua. Yes, they're better with them. And yeah, your chances of victory increase with them, but they're not bereft of talent without them. And I think last week showed that. You may have just answered the question, Greg. Uh, BYU does have a ton of playmakers, and we're looking for advantages that we can point to for BYU over Baylor. So where else do you see an advantage for BYU against a really good Bears team? I'll go back to 12th man. I'll go back to Lavelle Edwards Stadium and a late Saturday night and a sold-out crowd or near a sold-out crowd. Um, I, I think that, that hopefully will play uh, a factor. It did against Arizona State. Like, it, had a, it, had a, it had a role in the game last year against a pretty good Arizona State team coming into Provo. Um, and I just tweeted this stat out. It's a fun one. Uh, Baylor has uh, yet to win a game on grass under Dave Aranda. <laughs> wow. So, uh, what? So we'll go. This uh, thing is over. 12th man and horticulture. Uh, <laughs> uh, se secret advantages for beat. Now, granted, they haven't, they haven't played a ton of games on natural turf. Only I love three. It. But they are 0-3 uh, in those games. So, yeah. That's uh, 12th man and that's horticulture. A, that's a Greg Rubel special right there, which is awesome. Oh, that's okay. Fantastic. Obviously, uh, Baylor really honed in, did a great job of, of limiting the run game last year. Mm -hmm. With Chris Tyler Algier, an NFL running back, that kept in check. It's hard to feel like, yep, BYU is going to just snap out of that. But we feel like this O-line has improved. We feel like Christopher Brooks is, is a very good sort of second act to Tyler Algier. As and they say, As they say in Utah, he's the real deal. He's the real deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Tomorrow on the field, uh, yeah. Yeah. which will be interesting. What kind of difference do you feel like Chris Brooks will make, and Aaron Roderick this week said, hey, I think it's time for him to get more carries. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Tyler Algier was really, really good, and Baylor did a nice job with him. So it, it's, it, it's Chris Brooks doesn't automatically, um, you know, run for what he had against South Florida last week, but uh, I, I, I think it's as comfortable as you can be with another year of experience on that O-line, uh, knowing that you can give him the rock and expect him to be a Tyler Algier-like uh, workhorse. Um, but, you know, Baylor's D-line, again, is no joke either. I mean, there, there's some big boys up yep. there. And, uh, and so uh, BYU, every, every yard BYU gets, will have, they'll, they'll have earned. I guess to, I, I just think it's, again, the standard of the, uh, of, of the Big 12. I, yeah. I think that's this is a returning conference champ with a lot of playmakers they're trying to still discover. But, you know, Shapin won the job outright legitimately. That's why we saw... Gary Bohannon last week and not this week. Um, and so there, there, there's a lot that they can feel confident about. But again, there's a reason that people think BYU's got a, a real good chance to win this game tomorrow night. How many former and current Baylor quarterbacks are BYU going to face this year? They we've been talking, we've been talking about this. Charlie Brewer's potentially down the line at Liberty. And yeah, now, broke of course, his hand. He, he got hurt, too. He broke his hand in the first one. game. Yeah. 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 So oh, maybe he'll be available. He heals up. By the way, you, you mentioned Terrence Fall. I don't think people understand who he, he's French. Like, he's from France. We, and uh, he went to high school, I think, one year in California, and then now he caught a pass, which is pretty cool. It's I'm not sure we've had a, a French guy catch a pass. It's very bien. Hold on. Very is, this nice. a, is this the Quebec <laughs> version of Canada? This is the Canada-France connection it's, here. It's grade nine French is what it is. <laughs> okay, that's great. Yeah. Not ninth grade. Yeah. Grade, grade nine. nine. French. Grade yeah. nine. Grade nine. Grade nine. Canada, grade nine. America, it's, ninth yes, grade. It's yes, Zed, not yeah. Zeke. Yeah. Greg Rubel, the voice of the Postal Cougars, code. is with us on BYU yeah. Sports Nation. We have been looking at both sides of this uh, potential BYU outcomes here, obviously. What a win would mean for the Cougars in the grand scheme of this 2022 season, and what a loss would mean in turn. So let's ask you first, what would a win do for BYU on the national scope tomorrow if BYU is able to beat Baylor? Yeah, springboard into the top 15. I think, and now you're in the conversation like they were last year. Remember September? BYU got into the conversation, capital T, capital C, pretty early, and that's what that would do this year. Um, the loss uh, is your loss, right? You, you get your one loss if you're a team like BYU, and then you basically have to stay perfect the rest of the way to stay in or get back in the conversation. So I think we know what it means, and it comes pretty early for BYU every year that games like this yep. have this much riding on them. But what a great springboard it would be. And again, it's, it's an ESPN late night affair. It's two ranked teams. It's every opportunity for BYU to show that they belong in the conversation. Let's go. Okay. And that conversation continues on Cougar pregame live tomorrow night, 8 Eastern on BYU Radio. Yeah. Hey, Ben Bagley uh, from Cougar Canyon. He'll be with us in Cougar Canyon tomorrow. Ben and Riley, I'll make a stop by. Yeah, we'll see the fans. <laughs> you'll, make, you'll say, uh, utter a few words perhaps at yeah. some point. Yeah, oh. that'll be good. Okay, Greg, great to have you on the show, Always man. Always my pleasure.